So yeah, there's a saying that goes, love don't love nobody. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a short yet uh, dated way of saying that love does not love any one person. Love loves everybody. If it's love, like this, the Bible says, I think it's James 4.11, God is love and he that dwelleth in God dwelleth in love. No, God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God dwelleth in him. So it's like God loves everybody. God does not love any one person, but God has no respect of persons. So um, basically what it's saying is that people say, well, I want to be in love. Do you want to be in love or do you want to own somebody? You know, the Bible says um, when, 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 it is said, when it is said that love loves, love don't love nobody, love loves everybody. That's basically like saying that, you know, love does not love any one person. Love loves everybody. Or to say love does not love anybody. Love don't love nobody. But love loves everybody. Like saying that they shall be as the angels in heaven that neither marry nor are given in marriage. Which means that confining yourself to one person that is the institution from above that's a that's the institution of the spiritual aeons but when they came that you know the gods quote unquote gods some of them are fake gods f a k e hyphen g o t g o d's fake gods fake 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 gods you know but as it is though it's like saying um pretty much but the Lord God, you know, it's like a lot of the ideals and principles that the gods had in their immaterial, incorporeal form, they were merely ideas, but they never well, they never manifested into ideals or physical manifestations. So basically what, it's, what it boils down to is that the Lord God, he actually manifests, you know, that which is on the earth. Like the Bible says, we have not a high priest in Jesus Christ that, you know, knows not our infirmities. We have a high priest that knows what it's like to hunger and thirst. And he's able to better succor us or to deal with us for as much as he understands our, our physical and fleshly challenges. Which is why his message to me is, is so befitting. And his reference back to the word, be it Old Testament or New Testament, you can't take the Old Testament out. Because there is no, people say, well, it's just the New Testament. You can't just say, well, I'm using the New Testament because it's only new because of the Old Testament. So they're a collection. And, it, and even Jesus, Yeshua himself said, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. So, like I say, I realized that, you know, a lot of, a lot of the immaterial, uh, spiritual um, ideologies don't really work in the physical in the sense that that's why he came with the New Testament. And it is in the New Testament where it says they shall neither marry nor give in marriage, but they shall be as the angels of heaven. They shall neither marry nor give in marriage, but they shall be as the angels of heaven. You know what I'm saying? Basically, that's, that's in the New Testament. I don't know where that is in the Old Testament. I'm going to go get find me a Bible right now A Bible with references I need that word, I need that law I need that experience Anybody else that I come across can basically add on to, to that But that's the foundation peace, peace. Is there anything else? Um, yeah And so like a lot of blue women I'm just say it They, like I say they, they, were, they, were, they were actually like These female water beings You know, like I say the Bible said The Lord God created the, form, the firmament separate the, the waters above from the waters below and the waters were people like saying that the water follows each other fire burns separately like the Sith are like fire red fire and with them it can only be one you know they, they can meld together sometimes but there was a rule saying the rule of two and the rule of, of, of uh, the rule of two and the rule of three but they cannot be more than that because they were all battle they were always battle each other water follows water where water's always going water it is so they follow the leader they have that single file uh, green trees can grow together sunlight uh, whatever sunlight touches becomes light like yellow sunlight it's the mind so whatever you look at it actually becomes the light that you have if I'm I be single then how great and wonderful that light if I'm I be single and dark it is dark then how dark that light is so um, with that being said too like I say a lot of these um, blue women to a certain degree they have come out of the water they're blues they're like whales cetacean c-e-t c-e-t a-c-e-a-n-s cetaceans 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 ooh wow interesting so yeah so basically what you have is um 
You have these beings, they, they live in the water and they don't hunt for food. Their food comes to them. Like I say, red means that your food, you cook your food. You know, the mother cooks the food by the hearth of the fire. Green, you eat the green things. Red implies meat eating, but I'm not eating no meat. And then blue is like, it's in the water. Like, you know, the water should provide that which you need. But then somehow, like I say, the flood of Noah, after the flood, a lot of creatures that were in the water got trapped on land, much the way a lot of the fallen angels who had migrated into Europe, uh, well, what, they migrated into what, what would be known as Europe. They got trapped off into the mountains and areas like that. And so that ended up being um, the place where they were kind of like, I, would, I, I, I don't want to say dropped off, but I guess I'll just say that's where they were, um, that's where they were, they were relocated, you know, almost stranded there for like, you know, so with that being said, I'm more so inclined to um, say that those those beings in the water, they began to ingest water, you know. Men and women, they're unconditional, so they would ingest vaginal waters through cunnilingus, the water of life of sperm through fellatio. And they, as water, wa water's purpose is to have a purpose. So water that has been used is dirty water. Water that is clean has not been used, so water wants to get dirty by virtue of it being water so it can be like hey i'm water and if i have not gotten dirty trying to clean with the water that i am so these beings will try to dark blue will try to elicit water from its darkest sadistic service to others so they try to they premeditate premeditated service to others dark blue premeditated service to others to see the other person's water like saying that they use a little bit of their water like saliva they use a little bit of their water to get a whole lot of your water. Forgive me for knowing these sexual connotations, but sometimes when you know the worst, then everything else falls into place. And a lot of times people try to, you know, teach these theological lessons or they try to, you know, expound upon the theological lessons without, you know, touching upon the aspects of sex or even, you know what I'm saying, you know, explaining it. So I feel like, you know, to me, that's how I'd be better understanding. But they have to be cleansed. That can lead to a lot of filth and buildup in the body. And uh, a person can be a person can, can, can be possessed by spirits. And say if you swallow a man's sperm, and if he thinks that you know, well, dang, you know, she swallowed my sperm, she was easy to do it. It wasn't even hard to get her to do it. And and women do that, you know, to, to grow their hair back. They're like, yo, I swallow sperm. Like 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 if a woman takes um if, for women and men, if a, if a woman or man takes sperm into their anus through anal sex, it'll make their body stronger. It'll make their you know they have strong buttocks. But if they swallow it through their mouth, it makes their hair grow, like stem cells. Stem cells. Same thing with men when they um, perform cunnilingus, you know, it makes their hair grow. A lot of men out here are vampiric. These women, like I'm saying, they're the same way. They want their hair to grow. They go out here and perform cunnilingus on men and women, perform cunnilingus on women and fellatio on men, regardless of the gender, just to grow their hair. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of that going on. So be careful. That's what the Bible says. Put, uh, cover your head up. The women should put, cover the head up on account of the, of the angels. They should put power on their head. Because if a man sees you have a nice grade of hair, then he'll try to, he'll, he'll, he'll gauge that as your protein level, like estrogen and, uh, what is it, uh, uh, progesterone. Progesterone, like it gets the body ready for pregnancy. So pregnant women are really, uh, you know, like on Dracula, she had the baby. She was going to feed off the baby. Pregnant, pregnant, pregnant women are, and babies are susceptible to these vampiric type beings who seek to augment, who seek to augment and boost and enhance cosmetically their own physical appearance in order to continue usurping and using people vampirically, you know, sucking them. It's really bad. Peace, peace.